Well, good, good evening, good folk. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back to another, well, I guess I can't say kitchen counter thrift haul anymore. But don't worry, I am actually back with a thrift haul. Stay tuned. That's right, it's been about two months since I've had a thrift haul. This is not a live sale, it's not a drop sale, it is a thrift haul, and it's all for sale in the old curiosity shop, my eBay store, which I have neglected horribly for the last many weeks. Now I'm gonna divide this thrift haul into two parts. Half of the items that I'm gonna show you are already listed. In fact, they were listed yesterday. yesterday. The rest of the items will be listed at some point tomorrow afternoon. This is Saturday night, tomorrow afternoon, meaning sometime on Sunday. But it'll all be available for seven days on the old Curiosity Shop. If you'd search for it, you won't probably won't find it. So go to the description box underneath of this video and you'll find a link. You can click right to it and go straight to uh, my eBay store. It is my goal to be building my eBay store back up. Um, over the winter months, I hope to build up a, a good amount of buy it now items, which so I'll have a, a standard inventory in the shop. And then I also plan on doing maybe one live sale per month, something like that. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Speaking of the live sales, Everything is in the mail. Now, the last live sale that I did with The Vintage Vinny in Hagerstown, I was delayed a day or two on getting that stuff in the mail, but it is in the mail. I promise you that. So it should all arrive mm, the day before or the day after Thanksgiving, something like that. So why don't we go ahead now and take a look at the things that I've got in this thrift haul. And all of these items are actually currently listed in the old Curiosity Shop. Thank you for tuning in. Let me have a sip. I'm still doing the hot cider. Mm-hmm. Out of this wonderful old amber glass Jacobean mug. All right, let's do all of this green glass first. I've got a ton of it. A ton of it. And every piece of it does glow under black light. So everything that I show you now, I'm not, um, if you go to the auction site, you can see the pictures. It all glows, it's all got uranium, it's all safe to use, we've been through that before. It's not often I find Ellie Smith that's listed, I'm sorry, that's signed, and it is signed L.E. Smith glass on the bottom, which is difficult to see. Could be a console bowl, or I think I said the last time, you can serve your glow-in-the-dark meatloaf. I should have sold this, you know, at Halloween time. Uh, so really a serving dish, but Ellie Smith is, well, no, I take that back. They made, they made dinnerware as well. There's a little roughness around these edges. This is not fire polished glass, but an, un, an unusual item and one that's not normally seen, at least by me, by Ellie Smith. So, um, a nice 12 inch console bowl or a meatloaf bowl or mashed potatoes. It'll be a big hit this Thanksgiving. Well, now I take that back. The auction, the auction won't end by then. Well, you'll have it by Christmas. I have four of these. I'm only, only gonna show you one. This, these are wonderful um, footed tumblers. These are made by the Indiana Glass Company. And this is a pattern called Old English. Now, uh, this is thick glass, it's heavy glass and they actually polished it. It's nice, it's nice glass. Indiana sometimes made eh, but this is good stuff. Uh, four of these tumblers, they glow beautifully. I'm, I don't worry about really to keep saying that. Four and a half inches tall in this Old English threaded pattern. So, uh, not that, they're out there, but you don't see them every day. I've got six little sherbet cups 
everybody, Federal made them, Hawking made them, everybody made them. These are not marked. I think it's the, is it, it's either the block optic or the ribbon. I don't remember and it's okay, but six of the little sherbet cups. Uh, also from the 1930s. By the way, there aren't any chips or cracks on any of this green glass. You may find some straw marks. There may be some roughness around the edges. Remember, this is depression glass, cheaply made. As a general rule, rule not fire polished, although these Indiana, Indiana pieces are. Oh, I take that back. I've got one really good set down here to show you. I'll show it to you uh, last. I've got four champagnes or tall, tent, tall, stemmed sherbets just four of these <laughs> and you can see again it's sort of a block optic pattern probably a hawking piece but these are these are nice so as a cocktail or your plum pudding i guess you wouldn't eat plum i would eat rice pudding out of that of course i'm always screaming about rice pudding and i've got five of these now um Wine glasses in those days didn't always look like wine glasses today. We're going to call these wine glasses because they got grapes on them, suggesting that these, these would be wine glasses. But if you're a teetotaler, drink grape juice or tea or water, water out of these. I've got five of these. No cracks. And this is thin glass. And these are all etched, you can see. I'm telling you, all of this green glass is wonderful. Now, the best of the best of the best. This is a good set. Oh, I'm telling you. This is, um, I'm going to say either Cambridge, Fenton, New Martinsville, you know, that kind of thing. Good department store glass. And there's a lot of uranium in these. Uh, you can see it's just glowing right now without even a black light on it. Uh, it's heavy glass. They have nice polished bottoms. Uh, and I've got six of these and they are beautiful. There's no roughness that you often get with the cheap stuff. And I just can't say enough about this particular uh, set. I've held on to it for a long time. Here it, is. Here it is. And it's just really, there's a luminescence to it. It's just a step above the cheaper uh, mass produced depression. You know, giveaway, dime store, right? This stuff, this, jewelry stores, department stores, catalogs, that's better glass. And I've got six of them. Of those cups and of those cups and saucers. Okay. Now all all of this is listed currently, and there's only about six days left in this. I haven't gotten to the unlisted stuff yet. Uh, thumbprint coin dot Fenton. It's just the bottom missing the top. I know what the lid looks like. I've seen it referred to as a candy dish. I've seen it referred to as a dresser. You know, for the trinket for ladies dressers, but no lid on it. There's a little bit, a uh, little, some little, it's not chipped around the top, but there's some little, well, there's a little crack in there where the, more like a, like when a stone hits your windshield, a star crack, I guess, that kind of thing. See it right there? Hidden, but hidden, hidden by the lid, which of course I don't have, but there's the bottom piece to it. That's listed. These two wonderful Art Deco salt and pepper shakers are listed in this luster. Oh, I guess you should see they have flowers on the front. Silver tops, they're made in Japan. They have their corks and there's no damage. See this? The white, the pearlescent part is the luster part. Very Deco, very 30s. Speaking of the Deco 30s, my two Bakelite bunnies are for sale, for auction. 
And they're napkin rings, and they're also from the 1930s. This little guy has lost both of his little jewel eyeballs. This little guy has both of his red jewel eyeballs. See that? And it's this wonderful, uh, it's Catalan actually, um, butterscotch, and it is just fantastic. So these two bunnies are listed. I also have a Scotty dog collection. Yeah, I have a Scotty dog collection that has no damage on it. Let's show you each individual piece. You're getting all of these together in one lot. And FDR's little fallow would be, would approve. Uh, here's a framed motto with the Scotty on it. These were so popular in those back in those days. This one has no date on it. We know it's from the 30s. Uh, and so the little motto has a poem on there about friendship. So you can read that if you go on the auction site. Now, also in that lot, you get uh, three Japan pieces. One, two, that's the whole family. I love the black and orange. Made in the 30s in Japan. Little Scott, little... Uh, Okay, and then, this is my favorite one here. This is also made in Japan. The little terrier here. Uh, trinket tray rather than ash tray. And there are no repairs on this. I like the color, almost a celadon. And finally in that lot, a who's, H-O-U-Z-E, sometimes with an X on the end, jade glass blotter. It's missing the blotting paper and the metal clips. There were metal clips that went here and here to attach the blotting paper. And this would sit on your desk. And and uh, when you used uh, ink fountain pens, you could blot out the ink. So it's not a rocking horse. It's a little Scotty, 1930s. And this is, this is the only one that's glass, right? So the whole little Scotty dog lot, there it is, Scotty Terrier, you know, the, there they are. That's all listed together. Now, the other things that I'm going to show you are not listed yet, but they will be by Sunday afternoon. I've got two old pieces of Fenton milk glass, and we know that it's the old formula. You Fenton glass collectors are gonna know. Do you see what we see the, see the uh, translucence here? Right, see this? I hear people say ring of fire. I don't think that's what that is. But anyway, Silvercrest, uh, what year did they change the formula? Sometime in the 50s, and then it became really white. This is more of a, uh, oh, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's more of a watered down white. It's not that solid, solid, bright, bright white, and you get a little bit of opalescence to it. And then here's the other one, also silver crest, and it also has that, that look to it, which on camera, it... <coughs> Excuse me, it might just look white, but it, it really is the older uh, type of Fenton. You'll see it. You'll know when you get it in person, you'll be able to see. I'm going to sell these. I showed you these in a haul. There is, there's no damage on this vase. There is a little damage on the matching wall pocket, but uh, it's a chip on the back, which won't be seen when it's hung on the wall. And there's a little hairline crack right somewhere in the front of it. Which doesn't seem to want to affect its integrity too much. Yeah. So hang this on the wall in your kitchen and you've got a little vase to go with it. And they are matching. They both have the same colors and the same stylized wheat or corn or whatever that is on the front. Unmarked, I think it just might say USA, so nice from the 1930s. We have a black cat in redware, probably made in Japan after the war, and the sticker has fallen off. 
planter. The red paint on there is in great condition. So this little kitty planter will be listed by tomorrow afternoon, as well as these two pieces here made in Germany and they're matching pieces. They were probably for the dinner table. Uh, they look a little too small for celeries, but you can do whatever you choose, serve whatever you choose in them. See, they're only about 10 inches. And I believe these are decals on the inside, yeah. Would be nice on a dresser as well to hold your brushes and combs. No damage on those. I've got a really nice biscuit jar made in Japan in an Art Deco style. Wonderful colors. The original handle is in great condition. A nice heavy black lid. Clean on the inside. Clearly marked made in Japan on the bottom. And uh, let me see here. Or is this, uh, yeah. Yes, hand painted made in Japan. Um, typical of what you'd see between the type of work done in Japan between the two world wars. That's a nice one. And it's nice to see something not always in that um, purple and peach that we always see. Colors that aren't seen as much. I've got two picture frames I'm selling together in one auction. One lot, you'll get them both. This is going to be the end of my, well, I've got one more, of my antique late Victorian circa 1890s to 1900 uh, heavy cast metal frames. These are originals. They're not reproductions. This one, harder to find. It's one to hang on the wall. And you, you can see, now neither one of them have glass, but you just cut yourself a piece of glass and it slides down in and these three little clips hold it in. And uh, this this never had a lever to or an easel to stand up. This was always one for the wall. I wish I had two, but I've only got that one. And then this one does swing out to stand up on your mantle or wherever else you'd like to put it. So, and this has all three of the clips on the back, see, to hold the, the glass and the pictures in. So you get your own glass and you'll have two wonderful old antique frames. Um, they have not been overpainted. So this is an old original surface on these, which is so much better than some old can of gold radiator paint. Uh, one more frame. This is harder to find because it's a big one. And this is also an original with an easel back. And take a look at that. Uh, also, we'll need to have a piece of glass cut for it. And it's got, it's, um, if we turn it around and look at the back, the clips that hold the glass in, there's one. And there's two and uh, let's see, there's three and the fourth one is right here. So this is antique. I love these uh, sort of Olympic torches on the side. Okay, wonderful. So this, this, is, this is the real thing. You know, I love it when you see old pictures of very wealthy people and there's a grand piano and they've got a bunch of these frames on a piano scarf all over the back of the uh, Mason and Hamlin. And this is a, uh, this is an original, nice and heavy and there's no damage. It's not missing anything. And it too has a nice warm old finish on it. Look at sort of the goat hoof legs. Who would you put in there? Which relative? All right. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to show you that's not listed yet, but will be, is this lovely piece right here. She is beautiful. Take a look at her. She has no repairs. She has no chips, no breaks, and I'm going to say no cracks. 
but you can't see it on camera. If I, you probably can see if you look at the auction site uh, on her left. Well, depending on which way you're looking at her, just above her cleavage, she has a little glaze crack. Not a porcelain or pottery crack, but just a little, maybe you can see right there. It almost looks like a little hair, right? See that right there? I know it's blurry. And it doesn't see, it just seems to be right there. So I guess, yeah. It's, it's not, it doesn't go any higher than above her. <laughs> it doesn't go, go any lower. You can see it, it's right there. It's just a little tiny, all right, enough of that. She's got a bustle on, and I am just going to guess that she would be for a ladies dresser. This, I'm getting ladies vanity. I don't, I wouldn't put plants in there. I, I wouldn't think she'd be a planter. She's holding a vanity mirror. Um, it's very lightweight. So I really don't know what this was used for on a vanity. Um, it's not a hair receiver. And uh, I suppose you could put hat pins in it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that you'd be dropping combs and brushes in there because this is this is pretty thin ceramic. Now this is made in um, this is made in Japan, and if you look at the bottom, do you see all those little all that crazing in the glaze? That's the type of a line that I'm talking about that goes right here. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm not really saying that it's a porcelain crack. It's more just a uh, surface glaze crack, uh, but that's what she is. She's beautiful. I suppose, you know, tissues, cotton balls, something lightweight would probably be put down in there, uh, but she's just, hold her still. Okay. So she's really nice. That's not, that's, that is not her rear end and her legs. That's the, that's the uh, vanity stool she's sitting on. I think you probably already didn't really need me to tell you that. Her dainty shoes uh, on the pillow we can see on the front. It is kind of funny though, when you turn it around, it almost looks like something else. All right, let's put her down. What would you put in her? I'd stuff little tissues or cotton balls down in there. Now, that's it. Oh, but that's not it. I think probably the Monday night after Thanksgiving, right? The company is gone. Um, I've got a house guest, yeah, arriving in my new house uh, who will be here for several days. But that, ha that house guest will be gone Monday morning. I think Monday night after Thanksgiving, I'm going to do a Christmas live sale or at least a live sale that has a lot of Christmas in it. And I'm gonna show you three items right now that I plan on selling Monday night after Thanksgiving. Is that a good night to do it? Yeah. The dishes are done. You're just sitting around eating leftovers. Yeah, I think we'll do it Monday night after Thanksgiving. Let me show you three things that are gonna be in that live sale just to get you started, just to sort of wet your whistle. Uh, and it probably won't all be Christmassy, but a lot of it will. Yes, an actual girly candle. And for everybody who's not familiar with that term, I'm happy to tell you that Santa still has his label on the bottom and you can see, unless it's backwards or upside down for you. That girly is the name of the company. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's a nice tall one there. That Santa, we'll see him again at the live sale. We see the little tiny mugs, but the pictures are a lot harder to find. There are a ton of those mugs out there, but here's a winking eye Santa picture. That's the real thing. And I don't see anything on the bottom, but a lot of these were made in Japan. So uh, he's got no damage. 
and we'll have him up for sale during the live auction. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, and then we'll say goodnight, is a wonderful, uh, made after the war, probably in the 1960s. Um, a lot of you had this at home, remember this. Uh, the plastic church, it's got its uh, stained glass windows. It has a place in the back where you stick a light bulb. I currently don't have a light in it. I believe the cross on the top is missing. Make one out of toothpicks and you're set. Um, so we can light this up and it's also a music box. I'm going to wind it up and then say goodbye because this will play on and on and on. Uh, good shape, no damage, and the glue has not turned this, turned it brown. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget, the old curiosity shop, you can find the link in the description box below the video, and don't forget to join. Now, there'll be more videos between now and Thanksgiving. But, don't forget, Monday night after Thanksgiving, thrift haul including, I'm sorry, live sale including lots of Christmas items. Now let's wind this up and see, what does it play? Rock the Casbah? No. Okay, folks, that's it. As always, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching, wait for the cat, and so long for now. Happy early Thanksgiving. Happy early Christmas.